Hello, welcome to Natty's Crafts. So happy you're able to stop by today and see what I'm creating today. We are going to just do some basic household decor and just some useful items, again, just for around the house. Um, I do crafts for the joy of it and for the fun of it. Sometimes it's just because I wanna make something. So I think today we have a little bit of that going on. So I hope you enjoy. And I also ask that you go ahead and subscribe to my new channel. So I do hope you give me a thumbs up and like the video. Uh, subscribe down below. And then again, leave me a comment. Let me know what you like to see me do next. Thanks so much for stopping by. And let's go take a look. We'll be making this desk calendar, which is a dupe from Target, and here's the one from Target. So here's what you'll need. These small wood cubes from Crafter Square, from the Dollar Tree. A wood uh, plaque of some sort. This is one I got from the Dollar Tree. You could use any kind of similar little wood stand as well. And then four or five actually um, key rings, which I think you can get at the Dollar Tree. I just had these around the house. And then this handy little wood domino set, again from the Dollar Tree in the toy section. And then tumbling towers, again from the Dollar Tree. You don't need many, so you won't need that big huge box. And then you'll also need, I used a Dremel, but you could use just a regular sanding pad as well if you want to work hard at it, but I used a Dremel for that. And then of course a handy glue gun, and I used the uh, wood glue in this craft. And then actual wood glue instead of just the hot wood glue. And your favorite paintbrush, the Dollar Tree brush cleaner. And then some paint. Now paint is where you get to decide how you want it to look. I decided to go black and tan, or kind of black and stained. But you could also go white if you wanted to make it look a little bit more maybe farmhouse. So here's our big mess of stuff that we're gonna need. Now you could use these little tags, I believe from Hobby Lobby. I bought them on clearance, but I decided not to go with them. I went with the Dollar Tree instead. So on the plaque, you're gonna put little feet. So we're just gonna use the wood cubes, just one in each corner. Again, I'm using the wood glue in my hot glue gun there. So it is the hot wood glue. <laughs> And then I put this little tray on the bottom of the stand and I ended up not using it because it wasn't um, deep enough. But if you wanted to do that, you could do that as well to hold the little tags with our numbers or our dates on them. That's what that was for. I didn't use it though. And we're gonna start by measuring out approximately, it should have been a quarter of an inch from the top of the little wood dominoes because we're gonna put holes at the top of those wood dominoes, and we're gonna put holes through all of them. Now, I put my holes too far down, and it made it very difficult to get them on the key rings, so just put your holes a little higher up toward the top. And what I did is I just rubber band a, a bunch of them together so that I didn't have to do them one by one, So, and then just put the hole at the top of the top one and then just drilled through. I just put uh, rubber bands around the side and then around the long side as well. That helped to hold them still. And then we're gonna need to just sand off a little bit where we made those holes just to make sure that it's smooth, no rough edges there. Now we're gonna start making the little pencil holder that is um, on the um, back of the calendar. So we're gonna put two of the Jenga blocks together um, with the long side facing down, if that makes sense. So we're gonna do that twice. So four all together for that. And 
and then we'll just put one block to connect the two blocks together on each side. We're just making a square to put the pencil in or the pen, I suppose. All right, now here's where the Dremel came in real handy because what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the corner of that block so that it makes like a V shape when you put two blocks together. So I'm just going to sand off that complete corner of two of the Jenga blocks. Well, four actually, but two for this one right here. Now if you had another way to do this, if you had like a small saw of some sort or if you want to saw it by hand or even sand it by hand, you could do that. I found the Dremel though really easy to use and did pretty well. See how there's a little V there? That's where our numbers are going to hang from, from that little stick there. All right, and then we're gonna measure the dowel rod, which is again gonna hold the numbers. We're just gonna make it as wide as the plaque there. And when I have these dowels, I use dog nail clippers, which are from the Dollar Tree as well. Um, and you just spin that dowel around those nail clippers and it will break those or break that uh, dowel or cut that dowel. So those are kind of handy. Then we are going to need to sand off what we just cut there. So just a light little sand. Um, and make sure that it's somewhat rounded just a little bit so it looks good. You want it to look good. All right, so now I'm just setting everything up to get my spacing right. So we've got the little pen holder. We've got the pieces that are gonna hold the dowel rod. And then these are gonna be the number signs here, the, the little wooden dominoes with the uh, holes in them. So just want to make sure everything fits the way I'm wanting and we're going to measure out on the dowel rod where we need to make the indentations to have the key rings hang from. Now the dowel rod um, is similar to the uh, Jenga block where we need to make indentations. So what I'm gonna do is just uh, sand kind of back and forth until there's a, a fairly deep dip in the dowel rod. About halfway down is what I did um, in terms of depth of the dowel um, to make sure that the key ring stays down in there. So once we've made those, we just want to make sure that we're making them deep enough. So see how the um, key ring is going to stay in the little indent? That's what we want. Just want to make sure that they stay. And once we're done sanding, of course, there's going to be dust everywhere. So then I just had to clean everything off a little bit just to get rid of some of that dust, including on my little table. Again, with the silicone mat, best thing ever. And then we can start gluing these pieces together. So this right here is the dowel rod uh, holder. So I'm just putting them together again so that there's that V in the middle. And as usual, whenever you're gluing something together, just make sure you have a flat edge. Make sure it's, it's even and flat. We care about that. And then we're going to just do two regular blocks glued together as well because they are going to be the bottom of the dowel rod holder. So there's two blocks tall for the dowel rod holder. I'm sorry, there are so many steps for this craft. I'm sorry. I was just trying to get creative here, I guess. And then we're going to glue the two levels together so that they're tall like that. 
All right, and now we're gonna start painting, or what I'm considering staining, our wood pieces, the pieces I want to stay as wood. Which I'm gonna do all of the number blocks and the plate that they're gonna sit on in just the stain color. All right, once I'm done staining, then I'll move on to the black, uh, the pieces I'm gonna do in black, which is going to be the little pencil holder there, the two stands for the dowel rod holders, and then I'm gonna do the back of all of those tags and the back of the actual stand, the actual plate itself. All of that will be black. Now, I did not Mod Podge these. You should Mod Podge every piece of these. I will warn you now. Um, I kind of messed up by not doing Mod Podge um, and the paint started to scratch off. So just Mod Podge it. And I always use my hair dryer to dry all of my paint because I do a lot of painting. And now we're gonna put numbers on. So now you could use either a stencil or you could use stickers um, if you want. But of course, I always fall back on either my Silhouette or my Cricut because they're just so easy. Um, on this one, that stencil probably been really probably would have been really good. But again, I went I went with my Cricut instead. So I'm using my antique Cricut, the Cricut Expression, and all I'm doing is just doing numbers and then the three, um, the three letters for each month. So that's what I'm gonna do right here is just print those out. And once I've got those printed, then we can go ahead and put those numbers on the little wood blocks or dominoes, I guess they were. And you just wanna make sure that you are putting them on fairly even. There's, you know, not, I'm not gonna measure or anything like that. I'm just gonna put it where my eyes like it. So you can see here where I'm kinda of comparing the three to the four, just kinda of make sure they line up fairly easily. And then this is the hardest part of this craft, I promise. So we're gonna put those wood dominoes on the key rings. And I ended up about six of them fit okay. They were extremely difficult to put on there though because I put the holes too high on the dominoes. So put your holes low. And now we get to put it together. So we're gonna glue the bottom of the stands. And uh, the, my ruler is there just to make sure everything's even. And you see my dowel rod sits on there so nicely. And then we're gonna um, also glue on the little pencil stand. And that pencil stand, it could be the front or the back. I had it as the front, but in theory, I probably should have turned it around, turned the numbers around and have it on the back so that it's not in the way. But look at how adorable that is. Now Target wanted $12.99, I think it said on their, on their version. And mine was about $4 and I kind of like it better because I didn't like the gold on the Target version. So I like that, that's adorable. Now 
next we'll make this flower sign now i've seen a couple youtube youtubers make this uh, glue la la recently made one and crafty repeat she made one as well recently but here's my version we're gonna need this sign just a regular square sign that dollar tree always has um i don't know what size it is probably somewhat like a 10 by 12 or something like that so we'll need that and then some craft paper so that we can cover up all that glitter on the sign so this is just an aldi grocery bag and then one of these, um, is that tin foil? It's not tin foil, but one of those baking pans from Dollar Tree. Then of course we'll need glue gun, as always, and some super glue. Now I'm using the gel because it's so much easier to work with, again from Dollar Tree. And some sharp scissors, of course. Now that we're cutting metal, so it might go a little dull. And then your favorite paint brushes. And then I grab these to mix the paint to make more of a stainish color or a, um, to distress. And I didn't use all these paints. So I pulled the black paint and then I pulled the brown for kind of like a stained look. And then I also grabbed white. I only used the brown color. That's all I used. But again, make it your own. Make it how you want it to look with your colors. All right, so we'll start by taking off the little hanger. We are going to use that hanger, so make sure to save it. And we're going to take off the sticker, of course. And if you want it to sand off where that sticker was, that would be great. Um, and then we're going to just cut around the sign on the paper bag that we're going to use as the back covering. And then I'm just going to hot glue uh, that bag onto that glittery side of the sign to cover that up. And then we're just going to cut off the edges and also make the holes for the hanger to go back through. And then we're going to paint the front of the sign. Now you probably should have painted first before putting that back covering on. But, you know, I didn't think about that. So paint it first and then put that craft paper on the back. And then we're going to make shiplap lines here. So I believe I did like every three inches is what I did for spacing. And then I'm just using a pencil. A pencil looks really good to me. So I always use a pencil when I'm making shiplap lines. So again, I'm just doing every th three inches, I believe, is what I did here. And that looks pretty good to me. Now here's where you can add your color to your flower. I wish I would not have painted this. I wish I would have just left it as metal. I had made one once before with just metal. I wish I would have left it like that. I did not like this brown paint. It did not turn out how I thought. So just keep in mind whatever color you want, keep in mind how it's going to look. <laughs> um, so I ended up doing both the front and back because both sides of the flower will be seen. And then here's where I'm making a flower leaf. I'm just making it small. The main thing is that it needs to fit onto the, um, the canvas or the sign. So I'm just making a leaf shape. And then we're going to fit it here onto the sign. Make sure it fits actually on the sign. And everything's good there. So then I'm going to cut out the middle of that leaf because I do want it to be open. I don't want it to be a solid leaf. And then I'm going to end up using cardboard because that thing was too loose. So I did end up cutting it out of cardboard instead of just paper. And then we're just going to trace out. We want eight of these leaves. So we're going to trace out eight of these leaves onto the, uh, the metal. I still don't know what that is. Cake pan or barbecue pan or whatever that is we're going to cut eight of them out on that
All right, then once you have them all drawn, then we are gonna cut, um, cut them out. Now, of course, be careful because the edges are gonna be sharp. This is metal that you're cutting, so do be careful because it will be sharp. And as you're cutting these out, you do want to keep all of these scraps. So like the middle of this leaf, you do want to keep those because we're going to use those actually in the middle of the flower. So keep all these scraps and we'll worry about throwing stuff away later on, but keep them for now. All right, so here are all the pieces as well as all the scraps and the middles that we needed to keep. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of those scraps and we're gonna make a center for the circle or for the flower. So we're just gonna cut a circle out of one of those little scraps that we don't need. And then we're gonna end up gluing the petals to that circle that we just cut out. So you can use hot glue, you can use the super glue, or you can use a combination of both. What I'm doing is I'm gluing the flower pieces, the ends together the two tips, and then I'm gonna glue it to that little circle piece that we cut out. And I'm, you see all my finger protectors on there? Because of course it's metal, so if I use hot glue, of course it's gonna be hot. So just, if you're gonna do this, use finger protectors if you're using hot glue. And we're just gonna do this for all eight. Now it's important that you line them up so that it kinda looks like a flower. So I'm putting, kind of each one across from each other so that it's a straight line across like that. And then I'll do the opposite too so that it's going across the other way. All right, now we've got all the petals on, so all eight petals are there now. It looks pretty good so far. And then we are going to start on the middle part. So I'm using the middles that we had cut out of the leaves, and I'm just gonna bend them a bit. So I'm just gonna bend them around my, my uh, finger so that they have a bit of a curl to them. And then we're just going to work on gluing them to the middle of the flower. What we're gonna do first, however, is we're gonna glue them to each other. Again, it makes it easier to work with if they're glue glued together and then we can put it on the middle of the flower. Now I have to tell you, this these are two of my longest crafts ever in life. If you would have just gone to the Dollar Tree and bought the little flowers that they have for the garden, like the little garden picks, you just paint it white and you'd be done. But no, I have to make it difficult. I have to make it hard. So I had to create every single step, but it's okay because it is kind of cute. And then we're just gonna super glue it and then a little dot of hot glue in the middle uh, into the middle of the flower. And remember to not overlap the super glue with the um, hot glue. And there we go. Now, I wanted another circle in the middle there to kind of cover up all those rough edges. So I'm just cutting another circle out. And this time I'm going to paint this circle. And again, this is where your choice in colors and decor comes in. I painted it pink just because I wanted it to be bright for some reason. But you know, whatever color works for you. Maybe yellow if it looks like a sunflower, orange or something like that. Okay, our flower is done, so now we're gonna move on to the frame of the sign. So we're just gonna cut four painter sticks. 
These are just the regular paint sticks, not the large five gallon ones. What are the other ones? Just one gallon, two gallon? I don't know what they are. Just the regular um, painter's sticks. And we're just gonna make a frame, make sure that the sign fits in there. And I'm just gluing it together, just regular hot glue. And then I put it together using these popsicle sticks with regular wood glue and regular hot glue. And I have my sign in there so that I can make sure the measurements are good because I want it to be a snug fit there. Um, so that's why I have the sign there while I'm putting these um, pieces together. And then it's time to paint again. And I love my black frames, so of course I'm going to paint it black. And you would have an option, of course, if you wanted to Mod Podge over it to protect it a little bit. But everything is always black for me in terms of frames. You could do brown or white or whatever other color you like as well to match your decor. You do have to make these your own. Make these crafts your own so that they look good where you live and in your house. All right, so we've got the frame done. Uh, we've got it connected. And now we're going to figure out what we're going to do with the bottom of the signs. Because the flower is going to go at the top of the sign. And I was going to do a saying at the bottom, but I didn't know what to say and it wasn't a whole lot of space. So I'm just going to use that welcome sign from Dollar Tree. Here I am actually using Velcro to uh, put the flower on. I know that I'm going to change this flower out because again, because I don't like that coloring. Um, so I use Velcro so that I could take it off and switch it around. And you could change it for a Christmas tree or something like that um, in Christmas time. Here I'm using the foam tape to actually stick the welcome sign on because I do want the welcome to be sticking up a little bit from the sign. I don't want it to be flush. So the foam tape or the foam uh, mounting tape just makes it stick up just a little bit. And there we go. That's that one. Again, a lot of YouTubers have done this sign. Mine is a little different, I'd say, <laughs> but it was fun. It was quite a chore or quite a, a craft. And again, I'm going to link the ladies where that I saw make these signs um, uh, from Glue La La and then also Craft Eat Repeat. Look in my description down below and you'll see their links to their what they had created with the flowers from the Dollar Tree, which looked really good, which is where I got this idea somewhat from. I thank you so much for stopping by today and sharing in my craft time. I really do appreciate it and I sure hope you'll go ahead and subscribe so that you'll know when I release my next video. As well as go ahead and give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment. You may as well leave a comment as well while you're at it. I am a brand new channel. This is a brand new channel. I've been, I have a few videos out, but I'm really trying to get to a thousand subscribers by August. So go ahead and subscribe. Thanks so much.